I want to talk about tea, milk, and honey a little bit more. There's this sketcher, this urban sketcher. That means he goes out into the cities. His name is Mark Taro Holmes, and he has a concept that he uses when he paints city paintings in watercolor. He calls it tea, milk, and honey technique, okay? He did this old process, and it says, Mark refers to watercolor washes as tea, milk, and honey to correlate with their translucency, coverage, and application. Tea is very fluid. It's a wash. It's a wash. Milk, on the other hand, is a bit more opaque, requiring less water and more paint, and honey is rich, sticky mix of paint and minimal amounts of water applied sparingly. Basically, he works from lighter to darker and larger to smaller beginning with tea, which is followed by milk and then honey. The initial tea washes over the entire composition with large shapes. The following passes of milk and honey cover the underlying tone, building strength and solidity in the shadows. So he begins with a line sketch. Here's a, a sketch of his city that he did. He doesn't put more effort than necessary into this drawing. It is clean, fairly descriptive pencil drawing, meaning it shows us where windows and doors are, where trees are gonna go, okay? It includes the major outlines of shapes. This scene was at midday with the sun behind a thin haze of cloud, calling it for a generalized glaze everywhere and a washed out sky. Then he does his first pass, calling it T, okay? You can see that he blocks in his browns and his greens everywhere, very runny paint. Then he lets it dry, and it says the transparent tea mix should flow freely and tint, but not obliterate the drawing. So it's just tinting spots. Applying color washes quickly. See how Mark works with three big shapes in the image, wet into wet, while staying loose and squishy with lots of color variation. Also attempt to keep the dry edges between the live shapes sharp and work quickly. Mark spreads the wash over the entire image in five minutes or less, but the combination of swiftness and accuracy takes some practice. While working, stay aware of, way, aware of the color variation and go back for a slightly different hue each time, modifying the brace color with warm and cool neighbors. Notice Mark left a few small flecks of white, remember how important white is, throughout the midground to create some random glints. A wash should never be too smooth or perfect. There's nothing flat, nothing. Even this area here, dark green to light green, brown blotches, dark greens and light greens. Nothing's perfect, okay? His second pass, he calls milk. Now he's starting to put some detail in, okay? So he's zooming in here, more detail. After the tea pass dries, move to the second pass of color, milk. It needs enough paint to be cloudy. So it's got, it's a little bit thicker. To cover what is gone before, work from lighter to darker with the wash. You only need to deepen midtones and shadow shapes. Be careful to leave the lit areas alone and let the tea stain glint through. For this pass, you don't want uniform coverage Instead, create a light dappled texture, letting the layers intersect. Allowing little gaps in this pass created the illusion of light bouncing off the upward facing surfaces. Okay? It says, don't hold back the paint in this pass. Remember how honey, remember how little honey there is in a cup of tea or the final pass? The darkest darks are only for the final pop of contrast. And so his third pass, he calls honey. And now he's starting to put in all the detail work. The little windows, the people, the darks. See the serious darks in here, okay? Still see some pencil lines. Here's some more. After letting the milk pass dry, move on to the honey pass. If you think about Mark's analogy, there's usually one tablespoon of honey in a cup of tea. It's the same for creating the darkest darks when painting. A little goes a long way. They're only two or three percent of a typical sunlit image. Even when a subject is dark and shadowy, the spot blacks are only for the deepest contact shadows. A sketch doesn't really come together until the darks are properly placed because there's the ba basis of the gradient of interest. We know the weight of the darkest darks attract to the eye. 
In a painting like this, the viewer's eye will travel from the dark eye magnet in the eye magnet moving around the space. So our eye immediately goes to that dark and then moves around and looks around, okay? Immediately goes to these darks and then figures out what it is. So the darks are important, you just don't want too many. The honey pass is mostly about the deepest darks. It is also the last touch to a chance to retouch anything. Okay, so I wanted to read that little article to you. I thought he was uh, really quite uh, a good little urban sketcher.